With the Royal Rumble and Monday Night Raw now behind us, we look forward to SmackDown and building towards the Elimination Chamber premiere live event, which is less than three weeks away. So this episode is dedicated to hearing all of your thoughts, predictions, and reactions to this really big week in pro wrestling. Let's get it all started right now. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. One that everybody wants me. You're gonna acknowledge me. Welcome everybody to the WWE podcast. It is Wednesday, February second, twenty twenty two. We're gonna dive into all of your emails, your calls, but first I want to give a shout out to our latest patron. And his name is Zach Downing. So, Zach, I will be sending you the Discord link shortly for your uh, chatting pleasure with all the other patrons, which is such a blast during live events. And uh, all, you have all the ad-free content that your hearts could desire. I mean, like you, it, it will fill you to the brim with the amount of content we have all ad free. So I'd invite you to join Zach over at Patreon, patreon.com slash WWE podcast and get yourself in there for a dollar and go ad free as well as on Apple Podcasts. We have a subscription ad-free button right on the homepage of our Apple Podcast page. Um, one last thing also, go check out Ashley's podcast, Ashley Mann, who is a longtime co-host, probably the longest-running co-host in the entire existence of this show. Ashley Mann has a podcast called Kick Ash Podcast, like Kick A-S-H Podcast, all wrestling, all the time, not just WWE, AEW, and more. So I'd really recommend you check it out. It's it's, it's, it's as good as you would expect it to be, and maybe even better. So uh, go give her some love at Ki the, so the Kick-Ash Podcast. It's available on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts and Spreaker. So, all right. All right, everybody. Let's, let's uh, dive into the Patreon emails first. And that's another reason to go ad-free on Patreon is you get your emails read right at the beginning of the show. So let's uh, let's do that. We actually don't have DJ Kuzmo tonight. I know. Mr. DJ Kuzmo is taking the night off, a well-deserved night off. He needs to decompress from the Rumble, get his head straight, and he'll be back in full force next week. But uh, that said, let's dive in. Randy, let's, let's do it, brother. Randy, the patron, and he writes in and says, I loved the Rumble. I give it four out of five stars. I was shocked Ronda came back. Honestly thought it would have been Alexa. I always love Ronda, even in her UFC career. The question, though, are they going to do a triple threat again, but this time with Bianca? I really thought Charlotte was going to win when it was just those two, and it was going to make me mad. I think eventually she chooses Charlotte. What do you think? <clears throat> you know, I mean, we'll find out in two nights on SmackDown. There's... A strong likelihood that she chooses Charlotte, especially given the fact that the Royal Rumble ended the way it did with the women, with it coming down to Charlotte and Ronda. Logic would dictate it probably will come down to those two. Now, just because she chooses Charlotte doesn't mean we get some some schmaz uh, storyline that ends up bringing Becky in and once again. It is championship uh, versus championship for the women's division, women's championships, and the winner takes both belts. That could absolutely happen. Absolutely happen. And we also likely will have a title versus title match with Brock and Roman. I didn't talk a whole lot on that, about that on my Monday Night Raw review, but I wanted to because Brock Lesnar, I know this wasn't your question, Randy, but it's making me wonder <laughs> about Brock and Roman. Brock continues to mention the championship versus championship for whatever reason he's hell bent on making it a title versus title matchup at WrestleMania. And that tells me that they likely will shot it. They will make it that way. And I do believe too, that the champion, whoever walks out will have just dual belts. They won't merge the championships. I just been under the assumption that if it's title versus title, they'd merge them. That has not been cleared. Of course, we have eight weeks until the uh, till WrestleMania, so there's a lot of a lot of TV to get through. 
and a lot of storyline to, to get past and to be told to us. So I think that you could have in the women's division, back to your question, Randy, that it could be a triple threat. I I hope they don't go that way. I hope it's one-on-one. And if it's Ronda Becky, then cool. If it's Ronda Charlotte, cool. I don't want another another triple threat. But WWE cannot help themselves. They have a trigger finger, a hairpin trigger finger on triple threat matches, and they have no shame about doing them. And I could foresee them saying, in the greatest rematch in the history of the women's division, we've got Rowdy Ronda Rousey versus you know Becky Lynch and and, and Charlotte. And they likely have a, they have a good chance of doing that. WWE loves to recreate history, and when they do that, it's never as good as the original. Uh, but by the way, Ronda Rousey can, I don't know, uh, calling her ro- Rowdy Ronda Rousey. I mean, it's a blatant ripoff of Rowdy Roddy Piper. Why are we accepting of that? What other gimmick in WWE history is a blatant ripoff of another legend's gimmick? And WWE has allowed it. Is there any? Is Ronda that unoriginal that she has to you know, uh, just essentially steal the duplicate, try to duplicate Ronda, Ronda, Rowdy Roddy Piper's gimmick? A lot of R's there. And she can't come up with something on her own. I don't, I'm not a Rowdy Ronda Rousey fan. I'll, I will say that. She's a big star, but I think she's a better heel, and I don't like her as a person. I, 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 I don't. So there's a lot of, again, I advocate for her being there. But anyway, I'm way off the rails, Randy. Let's get back to your email. So let's see. Uh, now, for the men's, I called that a mile away. I knew Brock would not win because of Roman and Paul. You're, you're talking about the, uh, the, the WWE championship match between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you had your hunch that it was going to be because of Roman and Paul, and you didn't think Brock would win the Rumble, though. I thought that maybe Riddle or a newer talent would win it. And now the question is, do you think that Brock beats Roman or do they throw Drew in the mix? I, you know, I I think Drew could end up being in the mix or Seth Rollins could be in the mix. The way they left Seth Rollins laying at the Rumble, there's no way, just no way that uh, you have Seth Rollins take that and pretend it didn't happen. If they, if they ended it where, you know, Roman wouldn't break the, the, the five count and he just did it out of frustration, but also to protect his championship, then sure, maybe Rollins would be like, okay, well, that, you know, that's just Roman Reigns. I know I can't, he, he knows he can't beat me, and they move on. But the way that he brutalized Seth Rollins tells me that this program is not over, and given it's WrestleMania season, tells me even further that, indeed, it could be a, a triple threat of some sort, or hell, a fatal four-way. Uh, I don't mean to curse it, Randy, but I, I, you know what? If I could predict it right now, I hate to say this, it would be, and I don't want this, but this is where I think they're headed, is a fatal four-way for the United States, or in the United States, the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. There you go. And, and I don't want it. I'm saying I could see it happening, a very strong chance. So, okay, moving on. Becky Lynch on Broken Skulls was awesome. I haven't seen it, Randy. Um, I love how Stone Cold's asked a question about her and Charlotte. Glad someone stood up to Charlotte. Anyway, I'm so excited about Lita coming back. I can't wait for her. I can't wait for that match. Are they doing an elimination chamber for the women? If they said they are, they mu- they must have missed it. That's it. Be safe this week, Randy the patron. Well, Randy, thank you. So I don't. I haven't heard anything about the women yet, but my assumption is that they will do one for the women because they're trying to keep women on equal footing and all that, you know, that's my guess because to have two for the men and none for the women, I think would be a bit of an, an imbalance in their minds and in the minds of the, of the public, uh, public eye. So I haven't heard anything official. I haven't, I haven't, you know, done the Adam Pierce. It's official. Anything I, I haven't, but I, I, if I was to be a betting man, I would say that, yeah, they probably will do a women's rumble or a women's elimination chamber match. And uh, I, I also will have to check out the Broken Skull sessions with Stone Cold and Becky Lynch. I'm really glad you reminded me of that. That's on my list. Maybe tomorrow while I'm at work. <laughs> Don't tell my boss. Uh, I, I will be doing that. So um, thank you, Randy. 
And yeah, I'm excited about Lita too. I know a lot of people aren't. You know, I, I had uh, a guest, a co-host on last night, and uh, Kanye Twitty, formerly known as The Crisis, was on, and he did not find Lita really any any uh, really didn't do anything for him. There was no appeal for him there. I am a bit on the the more nostalgic side with her, and I think she's much better on the mic than say a Trish Stratus is. And she, I think, is okay in the ring right now. You know, she's aging, yes, as we all are. But I think she can hold her own. Do I think she's going to win the championship? Hell no. No chance. So, Randy, awesome to hear from you. Let's continue on. Tommy. Let's see. Tommy Smith, another patron, says, Hi, Matt. Hope all is well with you and your family. First of all, I really enjoyed watching the Royal Rumble and chatting with everyone in Discord. It was a lot of fun, except I have to admit that Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan picked the winner of every match right, or at least that's what he's telling us, and I'm too lazy to go back to verify it. Tommy, yeah, I, I heard that too. I haven't looked either, but uh, my co-host last night also said the same thing. So I'm going to go, that's two people telling me that. And I don't know if we're all just going in the word of Mr. Kaj Wrestling fan, but he's an honest guy. I don't. He has no reason to, to lie. So taking the, that at face value, he's good at predicting. I got to say, I, if you're looking to you know bet on sports, maybe have a conversation with him because he has a knack for, for uh, choosing the right winners in pro wrestling and, and, and maybe otherwise. So, all right. Uh, at first I hated the result of the Roman Seth match, but then as the night went on, I think that it was perfect and set things up for the future. If anything, they made me dislike Roman even more than I did before, which was their intent. My question is for you. Do you think that this is the start of a baby face turn for Seth? You know, I said that at the time because Seth came out in a very, nostalgic uh pulling at the heartstrings of fans way bringing back the old tactical tactical vest entering the ring the same way the music uh you know uh what is it um alpha omega i don't know like the, the, the beginning of the shield song i can't remember the words of it i tweeted it out somehow i remembered it um but everything about it was feel good for the fans and the fans cheered it And then as the match went on, I think that Roman became the default uh, heel in a heel versus heel match. And Rollins took over that uh, de facto babyface role, but even more so at the end when the sympathy was on him for getting his ass completely beat to a pulp with a chair. So I said, okay, here we go. Roman's firmly now back in the heel lane as he started to kind of weave in between lanes and the fans started to started to cheer for him more. I think they firmly establish him back where they want him to be. And I have no problem with that. Get everything out of this heel run that they can possibly get out of it before they turn him baby face. The other flip side to your question with Seth turning baby. I don't know, you know, last night or rather on uh, Saturday night at the rumble, if you had told me or asked me this question, I would have said, yeah, this looks like it's a, it's a baby face turn for Seth, the start of one. But then you, you you fast forward to Monday Night Raw and Seth's being his kind of insufferable laughing self and had a very, very awkward segment with Kevin Owens on his Kevin Owens show that did not go well. The, the chemistry was just, for whatever reason, not there that, uh, on Monday night. And, you know, I'm not, it happens. It's fine. I'm not ranting about it. It was just an off night for both guys and the segment was poorly written. I think everybody involved was just, uh, it just didn't work, which is, you know, it happens. But um, do I think it's a babyface turn for Seth? I'm going to need more evidence. You know, I think that if Seth goes to SmackDown, Seth's going to go to SmackDown likely on Friday and confront Roman to which, by the way, WWE will just ignore the fact that he's a raw star. And uh, I'd love to know the excuse now from Michael Cole of as to why that uh, we have a raw star here, you know, uh, because what the hell are we doing with the draft if you're not going to even abide by the most basic rules possible that people just can't show up on other shows unannounced, unprovoked and, and wander about. I mean, that's the basic rule. That is the foundational rule of through the draft. Without that, the whole thing crumbles. But uh, maybe maybe we'll get an excuse from Michael Cole that, oh, well, you know, it's WrestleMania season. Uh, you know, the one time that SmackDown and Raw goes head to head. And then, uh, you know, Rumble. Well, it's Rumble season. That's why they're here. And then Survivor Series. Well, it's the one time they go head to head. That's why they're here. I mean, <laughs> and, and it just the nonsense goes on and on. So I fully expect that Seth is going to be on SmackDown to confront Roman Reigns. And at that point, I think if he's if he's in the ring with Roman Reigns, he's a, he's going to be a baby face. If he's in the ring with Kevin Owens doing his insufferable shtick, I think that probably he's and I say insufferable in an actual complimentary way. I don't mean it in a way that's channel changing. I'm, I'm being as complimentary as I can to Seth because he's doing career work right now. And, um, 
So I want to make that distinction. But I think it's, it's going to depend on the brand and the storyline. I like Seth as a heel, but in a Roman Reigns case, as much as I hate Seth Rollins as a baby face, because he's way more suited to be a heel, way more, that you could have um, him as a baby face for the sake of keeping Roman a heel. Because keeping Roman a heel is priority numero uno. The absolute most, uh, the biggest priority because it's working so well and I wouldn't mess with what's working. Okay. Um, no, then your, is this your final point? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, I I didn't like Ronda winning the women's rumble. Like you pointed out in your review show, they have two spots for WrestleMania. And I think they could have easily put Ronda in there without having her win the rumble. I think they missed an opportunity to restore some credibility to Shayna Baszler. They have booked her terribly over the past year. And this was her opportunity to have her go back to being where she was last year. Maybe they will, they, uh, she will get a push later, but I'm curious as to why, uh, what you think they will do with her in the future. Thanks, as always, for a great show. Looking forward to your comments, Tommy. Well, thanks, Tommy. So, yeah, I mean, I, I did mention that, and people forget that. You know, people flip out about uh, Rumble winners, and you just have to remind yourself. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, there are two ways to get to a championship match. <laughs> you, know, they're, they're, you know, whether it's the Rumble or the you know, multiple, uh, you know, the, the multiple lane Avenue number two, which is attack a champion, just directly challenge, declare yourself as number one contender. I mean, like <laughs> there's so many with tournament. I mean, like, you know, take your pick. Um, so yeah, you're right. I, I think the reason they had her win the rumble is the rumble winner has always been a prestigious spot. You know, winning the Royal rumble is, is a, is a prestigious, um, it's a prestigious victory. It tells the audience that you are going to be the focal point for your respective division for the next eight weeks. And yes, there's an avenue number two, but it's kind of like plan B, you know? Um, so, so while plan A is the rumble, plan B is there for a championship match, but it's often kind of like just below the the rumble winner. You know, I think... That's how they view it, and that's why they had Ronda win, because even though she's in the same position, if she challenges Charlotte and, say, Bianca Belair challenges Becky, well, they're both in championship matches, but it's perceived as a larger win for Ronda because she won the Rumble. The Rumble has all this prestige surrounding it, even though it's the same exact destination for both Bianca and Ronda in their uh, in their matches, again, in, in their assumed matches. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, as far as Shayna Baszler... I have been waiting for them to do something with Shayna and you and I and others since she was in the the tag team with Nia Jax. And we all for months and months and months during the pandemic era, the Thunderdome era had said, okay, this is, you know, this is okay for now. They, they added a lot of credibility to the tag team championships for the women, which by the way, have been completely just forgotten. And that's okay. If you don't have a division to forget the championships, I'm fine with that. Don't be an embarrassment. Um, but with, with, Shayna in that tag team, we said, okay, at least she's getting airtime. She's doing something so of significance, even if it's not in a singles role that we all want for her because we know what she's capable of. You know, remember at the uh, Elimination Chamber just a few years ago, before she faced Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 36, she was, she single handedly beat every wom- woman in the Elimination Chamber. Do you remember that? That's the Ronda Rousey I want. The Ronda Rousey that snapped uh, Nia Jax and Eva Marie's arms. That's the that's the Shayna Baszler we want and we know is there. And they just, for whatever reason, use her as Sonya Deville's lackey on SmackDown. And then she's here and she's there and she's not, not. She doesn't get a whole lot of mic time. I don't know what they feel like she is. I don't think they know what they think she is. We know as fans what she is. She's a certified badass that isn't all about sex appeal that can kick your ass and snap your arm. That's what we love about her. She brings a sense of reality to a product. She bring, she brings a sense of credibility to a women's division that at times still focuses on the sexuality um, of, of women. And I'm not saying it's nearly as bad as it was, but at times there's that flair, no pun intended. And there's that um, innuendo that, well, yeah, it's the women's division, but look how look how beautiful they are. I mean, look at, look at for God's sakes, um, Carmella, who just her entire gimmick is focusing on how she looks. Sasha Banks, every outfit she wears is, you know, um, she she gets as creative as possible with showing as much skin as possible, being as skin tight of an outfit as possible under PG rules. I mean, 
I'm sorry, as far as Sasha Banks goes, she's an amazing athlete, decent on the microphone, and a legend for the women's division in the making. And I just can't, I often can't focus on her matches because I feel like her attention inadvertently or maybe purposefully by her is being driven to her outfit and her body. It just is. And, and I know there's, there's, there's women out there listening saying, what are you talking about? You're just being a pig. No, I'm not. It's biology. It's wired in my head. All right. I'm, and I'm married, happily married men. But it's just uh, looking at that on screen and you see that it's very distracting. And I don't want that to be. That's, that's the other point, too, is like, okay, it's happening. I recognize it's happening as a man. And I, I can guarantee you there's like <laughs> probably hundreds of thousands of other men watching this thinking the same thing. And we want the actual wrestling part of it. We don't want the sexual part of it. We got enough of that on TV everywhere. Hell, you, you could open your laptop and boom, it's right there, right? Like if, you, if you're interested in that stuff, it's easily accessible. I don't want it in wrestling at all. Uh, so that's my point. Um, I don't know where the See, I go way off the rails. Let me circle back. Uh, I'm roping myself in tonight, guys. Um, but Shayna Baszler adds she, she looks different. She's not a very, a quote unquote, attractive woman by WWE standards. She has a different voice. She has a different look. She has a different in-ring style. So where do I think they're going to put her in the future? That's your ultimate question. I think she's going to be a part of the women's elimination chamber, assuming there's one, uh, maybe she'll have an, an elimination or two and she, then she'll get eliminated. And uh, at the at WrestleMania, she'll probably be involved in some kind of uh, tag team scenario or, God forbid, the women's over the top rope battle royal where they throw all of the misfit toys. They didn't know what to do with that WrestleMania. I mean, that's that's probably probably where they're going with uh, with Shayna Baszler. Unfortunately, I don't see her in the women's championship picture uh, until there's a baby face champion she can challenge. Because she's not going to go heel heel, especially Charlotte and Shayna. No one would care from a an emotional standpoint, I don't think. So, all right, Tommy, thank you. And let's see. Let's go next to, where do I want to go here? Where do I want to go? Dennis, Dennis McGinley. What's going on, man? So let's see what Dennis has to say over at Patreon. He says, hey, Matt, I have some things to share about your recent Raw review I heard on February 1st. I guess you could call this my long rant. You had a co-host, Kanye Twitty, which was great to hear. You usually do a great job with getting a detailed review from start to end of Raw. So recently I started to watch Raw and SmackDown on Hulu. But before that, I would have relied on you to give the rundown on all the matches of Raw and that had happened. Let me give you info when I started emailing you at first to explain to you about a doctor that had me limited limited me on watching and listening uh, screen time. Since then, so I, I I got what you say, Dennis. So basically, the the doctor says to you um, that you you have you can only watch a screen for so long because of a medical condition. Cool, got it. All right. Uh, since then, some things have changed, and I'm slowly watching Raw, the two hour replay the next day, and all of SmackDown on Hulu. Getting back to this week's raw review, if I hadn't watched, if I hadn't watched what I had on Hulu, I would not have known very many of any of the qualifiers. Because on your podcast, you never went in depth with each of these matches for the Elimination Chamber. Also, I'm sure that there are a match. There's a match I would catch on the podcast because they aren't on Hulu on the next day on Raw. Uh, I know you're busy with your kids. Um, but if you could keep me up to date on WWE's old and new things, I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Say okay. So Dennis, thank you for for writing in here, and um, yeah, I really I really do appreciate that because you know with bringing back co hosting, there are some. The thing is, we we've limited it to like an hour or so. Normally, I go into depth, more depth on matches that happen. But given the fact that we were trying to cram in Rumble wrap up and Raw uh, review, we did gloss over things. So. Uh, for those of you, including Dennis, that wanted more of an in-depth match, match by match, I get it. And uh, I will. Uh, what I can do is maybe, in in addition to any conversations I have on Raw, if I bring on a co-host, I could either direct the conversation to match by match, or I could just do kind of a separate recording that add that that stitched together with that hour-long conversation. That I kind of do both. 
Uh, so yeah, Dennis, I, I you know, my bad. If if you if you listen to my show to uh, <clears throat> to be able to listen or to to understand what happened on Raw, and you are limited with screen time with medical reasons, yeah, I mean, like, so I, I will not disappoint you next week. Okay, I will get back to my regularly scheduled programming with uh, match by match next week. So, all right, let's get to Braden. What does Braden have to say? He says, "Good day." And I, I, I literally he says G day, so I'm going to assume it's good day, mate. Uh, that's what I want to say because <laughs> he is from uh, Australia. So um, if if I didn't just uh, offend anybody, because that's my best Australian accent I can do, and that's about all I know uh, with an Australian accent. Other than that, I will sound terrible. So let's continue on. Uh, let's see. So he says uh, all the way from Australia here. Hope you are doing uh, going well. So the rumble has come and gone. Just want to share my thoughts on the premiere live event. Very good, Braden. Everybody, round of applause. You didn't say pay-per-view. It was a hit and a miss. I believe Roman versus Rollins, uh, that match was great, I thought. I loved how Seth came out to the Shield theme song. Bobby versus Brock was decent. I feel it could have been better, but still decent. Becky versus Dewdrop was trash. Hard to watch match uh, the match. It was very predictable. Yeah, it was predictable, but that's okay. I mean... Sometimes as fans, we feel every match has to be unpredictable. There has to be a run in. There has to be some kind of schmoz finish. There has to be a big upset. No, you know why? Because then every match is gets um, recalibrated to that. Where we, if that doesn't happen, we're disappointed. Instead of just having you know straight finishes, and then when those big surprises happen and unpredictability happens, it's just that it's unpredictable. Because the more you do unpredictability, quote unquote. The more things normalize, so you're um, you're normalizing unpredictability. It's kind of a it's kind of a vicious circle. Uh, I don't know where the hell I was going with that, but uh, let's move on. <laughs> I don't know where my brain's at tonight, guys. Um, uh, let's say, oh, okay. So the mixed tag match was okay. I thought Miz and Maurice were going to get a cheeky roll uh, roll up in this to make this feud go to elimination chamber, but hey, it was still okay. Now the women's rumble. A little disappointed in the outcome, but was very predictable. And the same with the men's rumble. Very predictable. WWE really did not need to give Rousey and Brock the wins here. as they, uh, If they gave the wins to someone like Riddle and Liv to really elevate them to the next level and therefore creating big new stars, it could really help with star power. Obviously, that's just my thoughts. Anyway, thank you. Till next time. Well, Braden, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I went over this a little bit earlier about uh, there's two paths to the two paths to a championship match at the um, at WrestleMania, and there are, but you know, I, the more I think about it, the more it is kind of annoying. Well, I didn't have any problem with it per se with those two winning, because I understand it from a business perspective. WWE is trying to create as much of a buzz as possible, and having in your example, Liv and Riddle in their respective Rumbles win. I don't think would have created as much of a buzz that WWE would have wanted because to them, the the established star power right now is more important than trying to take a chance on those two individuals at winning the Rumble and then, you know, having it not be as much of a story. And then, you know, the, the viewership isn't as big as it could be if if it's out there that Ronda and Brock Lesnar win the Rumble. You see, it's kind of like the Rumble is... It is a um, it's a stage show where it's it's more like a in your face win where the second path to the championship is a behind the scenes victory. You know, like I, I, there's a phrase I'm trying to think of. I may, maybe I'll just come up with this. The Rumble's the spotlight victory, whereas the second path to the championship match at WrestleMania is the backseat driver um, or, or behind the curtain, there's an analogy behind the curtain, uh, path, you know, so they're trying to get the spotlight because they know how, how much the rumble winners get their attention and how it spreads through the internet, like wildfire, whoever wins. And they wanted it to be the biggest names possible. And the problem with that is you're also not building new stars. If you, when you do that, because it's, it sends a message to, um, it sends a, it sends a message to all fans that yeah these are still after 20 years Brock Lesnar's still here winning rumbles <laughs> you know uh yeah so thanks Braden all right so that goes i believe i believe that's it with uh with our emails from our patrons if i miss any i will uh i will apologize profusely but let's get to 
Let's get to Grace. Let's go to our, uh, our our normal mailbag here. And by the way, you can email us your questions at mailbag at wwepodcast.com. That's mailbag at wwepodcast.com. You can still email us at the old email, but I'd prefer if you start to uh, to use the mailbag at wwepodcast.com. So plus it makes me sound more official, makes me feel more important. Okay. So Grace writes in and she says, Hey Matt, I just finished watching raw and I just have to say one thing, Becky versus Lita. What WWE finally has given us a crazy, unexpected and awesome match. Can't wait for that one. Can't predict a winner as of right now, because there are a few more weeks to go before the match, but no doubt it'll be a great, it'll be great either way. On another note, do you think they are seriously going to give us Ronda versus Charlotte? So I'll stop there. Becky Lita, I, I'm excited for that again more than uh, my co-host was last night, and it seems like you're more in my boat with this being a, a match that I'm ex- you're excited about. Maybe I'm not maybe at that level of excitement it seems you're at, but I'm definitely looking at this saying, yeah, this is a match you never would have expected, never w- thought it could happen. So that in that respect, I appreciate it, and I appreciate uh, and I'm interested in the match from that perspective. Not necessarily who's going to win, because <laughs> let's be real about who's going to win this. Uh, or at least retain the championship because there's a difference. You can win and not win the championship. So, okay. So as far as Ronda Charlotte, I mean, it seems to be a theme now throughout the the show. So Ronda Charlotte, I, I, I could see that happening. If I was, if I was going to be a betting man and I had two options in front of me and it, it's, I had to pick one option. One is Rhonda versus Becky option. Two is Rhonda versus Charlotte. And I had to pick one of those with the, the uh, intent that my pick is going to be who I think WWE would pick, not who I would want. I think it would be Rhonda versus Charlotte. That's who I would believe because again, the Royal rumble was step one of that. They were the last two out the look. Charlotte gave Rhonda the look. Rhonda gave Charlotte. There's a story already building there. You could argue the same thing for Becky. There's unfinished business with Becky too. So, you know what? Either way, even if it's just Ronda Charlotte at WrestleMania and there's no third person, if Ronda sticks around for a little while, and my guess is that she does, um, you know, I think that we could easily get Ronda Becky at, say, SummerSlam. I mean, or, or, or in a pay per view before that. So. I think either way we'll get it. We'll finally get Ronda Becky. So uh, the other thing is too. this is a bit of a side note, right? Okay. So uh, this is not political in any sense. Okay. So Mr. Casual Wrestling fan who called me out on the, uh, his takeover edition about avoiding politics. And he says that he's not me. Um, <laughs> I, I love how I get called out on my own show by my own, my own uh, co-hosts. It, it's a wonderful relationship we have with everybody really. Um, but uh, this is not political in any sense. So but Ronda Rousey put on her Twitter feed her. Um, she, let, let me pull this up here. Not that you can see me. I'm typing in, in on Instagram, Ronda Rousey. And on, uh, let's see, what was it? She's got 14.5 million followers. Jeez. Uh, so she put up on, uh, let's say a day ago. It looks like a picture from the Royal Rumble, I think, or backstage. She's with her baby. And uh, that's cute, right? Like, no problem. And she's also breastfeeding her baby. Now, I have no problem with breastfeeding. It's one of the most natural things ever. But there's also a picture of her pumping the breast milk out of her. No, No baby. Just her sitting there getting her makeup. And she's holding a breast pump. Now, her hashtag was... Well, she said multitasking, hashtag normalized breastfeed, normalized breastfeeding. Okay. Who does not think breastfeeding is, is normal? Is there anybody out there that thinks, oh, you're breastfeeding your kid? What? But what, what do you mean you're breastfeeding your kid? You, that is just weird. No, no one ever has said that. Not one person. I think what she meant to say was, normalize public breastfeeding. I think that's the intent there. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know why she feels this This is the place to do this and why we also got a picture of her alone 
with getting her makeup done, holding a breast pump? If you're normalizing breastfeeding, why do I need to see you sitting there with a breast pump? See, there's no kid there, you know? So I, I, I just, I don't know. Um, it's, I just, I, I have mixed feelings on this, you know, like, here, here's what I'll say about this. This is way the hell off topic, but since Ronda Rousey's putting it on her Twitter feed or on her um, Instagram feed, um, and she's, I, I guess, making some kind of statement, as Byron Saxon would say, here's my take on it. And, and as a father of two kids, and I've, my, my wife breastfed my kids, here's what I feel about this. I have no, breastfeeding is awesome. I think it's better than bottle feeding. I think it's, it's wonderful, right? It's great. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. I, I I do find it weird. And and you know what? You can say normalize public breastfeeding all you want. I don't care what anyone says. If you're out in public and you just whip it out and you just like, you know, you, you, like no cover, you just whip out your, your, uh, you know, your boobs and you just start breastfeeding your kid on like, you know, you're, you're in like a mall or something or in any public place. And you just kind of like pull them out and boom, here they are. And kids go at it. Right. Uh, you see, to me, you can say, oh, it's, it's normal. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of normal things, human functions that you do that you don't do in public, but are still normal. Right. Am I wrong? I mean, do you want me to start, uh, keeping the, the bathroom door open for you in a public place? Like, I mean, I don't know. It's, you'll never be able to make it normal in the general sense of, people looking at it and saying, Hey, boy, nothing wrong here. No, this isn't weird. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't know. Um, it's, it's a very touchy subject to some people. And again, I I'm fully supportive of breastfeeding. I just, it will never, ever, no matter how many times I see it, you can hashtag all, you can hashtag away for the rest of your life. You can hashtag your, your, your Instagram account to death. Anybody can. You know, walking around and, and seeing like women just, you know, boom, here they are. And it's, well, I'm breastfeeding. It's like, yeah, well, the, the kid is, but you know, for the hundred other people around you, that's not what they're looking at. Right. I mean, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if this cut, we'll see if I cut this out of my audio, but if you're listening, obviously I didn't, I don't know. Ronda Rousey made me do it. So if you're wondering why the hell is he talking about breastfeeding on his podcast, Ronda Rousey made me talk about this. And I am not a fan of Ronda Rousey at all. I think she's an entitled, arrogant, uh, narcissistic human being. Perfect as a heel, though. Amazing athlete. Perfect as a heel. But I think she's a self-centered, just narcissist. That's what I believe. So, you know, take that for what you will. But I'm, I'm all for her being in WWE. Okay. Wow, that went way out in left field. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where in the hell I got this uh, from Rhonda and Charlotte. So if if you haven't already stopped listening to me, if if you totally disagree with my take on breastfeeding, um, that's cool. I mean, it's whatever. Anyway, um, Grace, so sorry. Let's get back. Are they that oblivious to the fact that they have been wanting Becky versus Ronda for nearly three years now? People wanted this match before Charlotte was put into the triple threat. If Ronda picks Charlotte this Friday, it will be such a letdown. And they are missing a huge opportunity for WrestleMania. What do you think will happen with that situation? Uh, so what do I think will happen in that situation? I, I, I th So people have wanted one-on-one -on -one Becky Ronda. Here's the problem, though. Becky, people want Becky to be a baby face facing Ronda. And people are having a really hard time struggling. They're struggling to boo uh, Becky Lynch. Her music is so catchy and it has so much nostalgic feel to people and a reminder of the journey she's been on. But I think until Becky turns back fully baby face, it might not happen. So I think she will choose Charlotte and it'll be one-on-one. -on -one. But if Rhonda picks Charlotte, yeah, it will be a letdown, but I think she will pick Charlotte. And I think Rhonda and Becky will happen. It will still happen because I think Rhonda is going to be kind of here and there on an edge like schedule for the next six to 12 months. So I think we, maybe we'll get it at SummerSlam. It'll happen. Well, it'll happen. Uh, okay. 
Also, I know I talk about Becky in all my emails and probably will continue to, but it's because she's my favorite and the wrestler that brought me back into the WWE after not watching for a long time. So I guess you could call me the resident Becky fan. Anyway, let me know what you think. All right. Well, uh, Grace, I mean, uh, resident Becky fan. Yeah, look, she she pulled a lot of people in because she's number one, a, a female that is at the top of her game. And how many times have we in WWE seen a female take over the industry? The answer is never. So she brought in a lot of new eyeballs. The fans are the ones that drove it. Because if WWE had had it their way in the sum, was it SummerSlam of 2018, whatever it was, and she turned quote unquote heel on Charlotte and the, the crowd just went along with it and they booed Becky, we wouldn't be sitting here today. It's because of the crowd in that arena that night that booed her or, or cheered that moment and turned her baby face and spit in the face of creative it's because of that night and the momentum that that was formed from that that moment to this moment uh and really through WrestleMania 35 and beyond that's the reason I think you became a fan because you said you came in because of Becky so all right Grace thank you for your uh your email and continue to uh continue to continue to contribute it's fun okay let's see where do we go next where do we go so let's uh, let, let's talk. Uh, so Dennis writes him not very long at all. He just says, what do you think of that, Matt? And things are not good in WWE. And what he sent in from Dennis, this, thank you, Dennis, for this. It's an article that is titled Shane McMahon reportedly receiving backstage heat pulled from Elimination Chamber match. Uh, and this says that um, this is according, according to Jeff Whalen. I can't see the actual website source. But it says on the latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Shane McMahon's involvement in the Rumble was discussed and it was noted that coming out of it, there was a lot of backstage heat on McMahon. Not only was he a participant in the men's match, but Shane was the head producer and presumably booked himself to look good at the expense of some other wrestlers. While he had no official uh, official office position within WWE, Vince has left the men's Rumble match to Shane to book not only this year, but in years past and the way he took charge reportedly rubbed people the wrong way. Dave Meltzer also reported that Shane was penciled in to compete in the men's elimination chamber match and WrestleMania as well, but those plans have been pulled and he was replaced by Austin theory. Well, that makes sense. Actually, the plan was apparently to have Shane involved in the chamber match to set up a match against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, but that is out the window now, though it's unclear if it's because the heat he's getting backstage led to that or whether Vince simply went in a different direction. Well, Dennis, uh, see, I'd respond to that, except we've now have learned that Shane has been quote unquote, let go by WWE. Shane is no longer with WWE again, that, that those are the reports right now. So once again, Shane comes and goes and goes and comes and comes and goes. So maybe he'll go back to, uh, I don't know, China and, and make more shoes. Or whatever he does. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there's there's obviously going to be more coming out of this. Shane just never has seemingly fit in with the family business. There, you know, we'll never know the backstage conversations that happen with the door, you know, locked and and shut and padded. Where we know nobody hears those conversations. You know, we can only sit here and speculate. We'll never know outside of maybe what's done in an interview or documentary years from now about what exactly is the relationship with Vince and Shane and why is it so strained and why has Shane been not really uh, interested in participating in this family business? You know, I I don't know. I don't know, but uh, it seemingly is Shane's gone for now. You know, Uh, do I think he's gone forever? No. I mean, hell he's Vince's son, but all right. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Let's see. We do have a fire trash mailbag from uh, Mr. Kanye Twitty. That is coming. That's coming. That'll be right after all the emails. So let's see here. Let's see what we got here. We have one more email, I believe. I believe this is the last email. And this is from, oh boy. Yeah, uh, this is Mr. Resident Heel here. So I'm scared. All right. He writes in and says, cut my music, cut my music. The resident heel is talking, and it's serious, people. I have to send this email in last minute because I was listening to The Crisis. Oh, boy. (laughs) And he says in parentheses, Yes, Matt, emphasis 
on me using his old name. Disrespect not only to me, uh, not only by me, but also the greatest wrestler of our generation. They're both begging me for to return to return. So here I am. You are lucky I even heard this as I was uh, heard this as when I saw a whole hour and a half of Matt and Mister. Uh, Mr. Shouty slash Pat McAfee wannabe, the crisis, I threw my phone out the window. Luckily for me, I have dozens of them lying around, so I endured listening to it until I heard myself mentioned. I take two weeks off, and this is the disrespect I get. I'm living rent-free in all your heads, and that's the way I like it. Without me, this whole show molds into another any other wrestling podcast. I'm the difference. I'm the supreme. I'm your resident heel. Acknowledge me. So yes, I will collect quote unquote my boy. In other words, the man, the myth, the legend, the Miz. Lots of love, your resident heel, Owen. Well, that is your response. You wanted a response and you've been called out, Kanye Twitty, by having him use your former name. Uh, Apparently to him, you are still the crisis. So, I mean, that, that is, uh, that's a slap in the face if I ever saw one. So I guess I will wait on the response. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get a drink of water. And while I do that, you guys get to listen to Mr. Kanye Twitty himself, who is going to give you the fire, the trash, and the Lunchables. Here we go. Hello! WWE podcast world. It's DJ. Co- wait, wait, no, no, it's it's not. It's not. But hey, I had to make sure that the DJ Kuzmo was fully represented here on the WWE podcast because uh, hey, I found out he wasn't gonna be here. So hey, Kuzmo, I got you, Kanye Twitty, and what is good, y'all? Yeah, I got a fire trash list. I got, and it spans. From Royal Rumble, it spans to Monday Night Raw. I got all kinds of of, of belly ache from how much lunchable breaks I had. Like let's and let's just start off real quick. Uh, the number one fire moment of the week is definitely the Royal Rumble wrap up and Monday Night Raw <laughs> review show that I, I got to be a guest spot and co-host with your boy Matt. So that is fire. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. Uh, but let's start straight up with the Royal Rumble. Lunchable breaks. I'm starting with the lunchable breaks. Miz and Maurice on the bump. Okay, when I watch a pay-per-view or, or a premium live event. I watched it all from the bump all the way through. And Miz and Maurice were on the bump. And if I have to hear the Miz say, who one more time, I'm going to vomit, okay? The, the Women's War Rumbles, number one, two, three, four, and five. Lunchable break. After that, A plus match. Uh, Sonya's jacket being relevant after she was called into the Royal Rumble. I was like, as soon as she uh, decided she still had her jacket on after she's been announced for the Royal Rumble, I was like, "Mm, yeah, lunchable break. And then uh, the Becky and Dewdrop, that is a lunchable break for the sheer fact of the fact that the WrestleMania side was on fire. Literally on fire. And that brings me to my fire list. My fire list. Oh, man. WrestleMania sign on fire. That's fire. Veer Mahan watch party in the Discord server chat. Oh, my goodness. I hope Matt's put up that, uh, that, uh, that survey because I'm curious what happens first. Does Alexa Bliss come back? Does the Intercontinental title get, uh, get defended? Or does Veer Mahan appear which one happens first so the veer mahal watch party in the discord server chat absolutely hilarious every number even in the women's war rumble people were like hey i I think veer's coming out (laughs) something else that was uh when tommy s says uh he goes he tommy s says my guess is he will be picked 17th but they will show a vignette and then he never shows up um, that comment right there, Mr. Tommy, it, it's fire. Uh, Wee Man and Brock Lesnar getting drunk and hammered the night before the Royal Rumble and uh, Brock Lesnar throwing him through a coffee table because, I quote, Wee Man looked up at Brock Lesnar and literally said, hey, Johnny told me you wrestle in a skirt. 
Oh, fire. If you haven't checked it out, go to the YouTube. It's fire. Uh, Booker T absolutely destroying Sonia Deville on the pre-show. I don't know what was going on, but hey, someone got into Booker T's ear, had to tell him to calm down because he was brutal. Um, if you have, if you didn't see the kickoff, you missed it. But Booker T, a real, real dude. That was fire. Uh, the kickoff match, Roman and Seth, fire uh the spear to the pedigree that was a fire sasha banks with her sailor moon ring gear that was fire uh, brie mode i don't like brie i don't like the bellas but when brie mode got the yes chance going i gotta say i'm a home it's my hometown boy brian danielson daniel brian whatever you want to call him. so that was fire mickey 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 she deserved that pop, that impact champion, uh, apps and using her actual, her actual ring entrance and everything. I was all about it. Uh, Ronda whooping some a booty at the end of the Royal Rumble. That was fire. Uh, Brock, La Brock and Lashley, their promos were fire. It, I mean, literally fire. Uh, and, uh, Lashley's ring gear, I gotta say Royal Rumble, he had it on, but I mean, that didn't transpire into monday night raw we will get there uh the uh let's see what else the roman reigns and 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 the whole storytelling uh with seth and all that that was absolute fire the first match of the, of the royal rumble was literally was was a a plus uh when miz and edges match was over that's fire. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, again, uh, oh, hey, and, and the fans in the front row of the Royal Rumble that had the numbers 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, they were fire because that was fun. It was hilarious watching those numbers pop up uh, as the countdown went on. Uh, Knoxville, fire, took the hits. Omos killing Ricochet. Fire and Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny is absolutely fire. Uh, the trash from your Royal Rumble. Oh, there's a little bit of it. Uh, the King. The, the King is like a fish out of water. He's like from an era that is not there anymore. And he just did not look like he belonged on the pre-show. Uh, Zelina's, uh, Zelina's uh, uh, bricks. I don't know what she was wearing. She looked like, like the bricks from Mario. Uh, her ring gear, absolute trash. Uh, Rhea Ripley trying to pick up Liv Morgan. Morgan in the uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, that was trash. If you've seen it, you know it. Uh, the Bella Twin, trash. Uh, Ivory, trash. I, did I miss the Ivory stick? Because I thought the whole Ivory stick was absolutely dumb. And I, it just, it wasn't me. It wasn't for me. So it's on my trash list. Uh, when Corey Graves said tonight, it's Alita making an impact as she knocked out. Uh, uh, no, no. No, 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 no. Mickey James did not deserve that. She deserved all the praise and all the pluses and all the fire moments. Uh, Corey Graves, uh, man, you need to just get off my trash list. He's been on my trash list for a few weeks now. The intergender inequality in the intergender match. Was anybody else hoping and, and, and maybe thinking it would happen that The Miz was going to give a skull-crushing finale to Beth Phoenix? I mean, I was in for it. I mean, Beth can whoop the crap out of Miz, and 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 Maurice can slap Edge, but but you you can't retaliate back. This is wrestling, okay? That is trash. Uh, uh, what happens first? Uh, oh yeah, we already went over that. Uh, AJ, oof. I don't like seeing AJ take bumps like he did when he hit that ring post. Uh, that was that was trash because I was worried for him. Uh, Corbin's shirt, trash. Shane McMahon eliminating KO. We all remember when KO got Shane McMahon off television, right? I'm just saying. Shane McMahon, trash. Uh, Shane McMahon's booking of the Men's Royal Rumble, trash. Uh, Shane McMahon rumored to be, uh, be uh, involved in storyline all the way through WrestleMania, trash. Shane McMahon doing anything right now trash uh, let's go to monday night raw seth rollins jacket that was fire the who day chance from cincinnati hey that was fire ziggler's new look uh, the scruffiness all that that was fire and riddle versus otis oh my goodness if you missed that match go back watch it and you will know exactly why riddle is one of the best players in the game uh trash list from monday night raw bobby lashley looking like a valentine box of candy 
uh, when, when he opened up with that promo. I mean, that's just trash. Uh, Corey Graves, no one saw that coming. No one saw, no, again, Corey Graves, you are on my trash list. Be better. That's all I got to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, KO, when he said, you're the universal champion of my heart, cringe. The whole KO and Seth Rollins uh, promo was just, uh, it, it, <sighs> trash. Uh, Carmella's whole gimmick trash i am over it this beautiful most beautiful girl in wwe the the way she screams she sounds worse than vicky guerrero right now in the ring and when she has to interact with Corey graves vomit absolute trash uh when the wwe burying the women's tag team titles trash the first two hours of raw trash and uh reliving the scooter race in the last hour a, a, a quiz bowl? I, oh, oh my god. Trash! Uh, you know, some honorable mentions. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan, you, my friend, are on the trash list just because I am jealous, I am upset that you called absolutely everything in the Royal Rumble while we were in the Discord server chat. So really, it's just, you're on the trash list just because I feel like I gotta say something. Like, if you got if you got inside info, if you got Corey Graves on speed dial or something, or David Meltzer in your ear, like... Like, you got to be better at, at hiding the fact that you know everything. The all-seeing eye of casual wrestling fan almost ruined the Royal Rumble for me. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, hey, hey, this is Kanye Twitty. Uh, I'm glad to be back from the COVID epidemic. Uh, yes, it took me down. I almost missed my birthday. I almost missed the Royal Rumble. Uh, but I am back to full health. Full, full fire, trash, and lunchable, and, hey, I'm going to be here for a while to come, hopefully, and, uh, hey, I'm hoping I get to uh, come do another another show, another show, because I feel like the fire trash list needs to go to AEW as well, so, yo, this is a shout out to, this is shout out to the AEWs, uh, yo, Ashley Man, Mimi Burris, yo, hey, can I can I come come make a special guest appearance on the AEW review so I can give you an AEW fire and trash list only if you want it because like I said the only no one's safe nobody is safe except for Ashley Man and Mimi Burst uh, they are safe sorry Matt no one's safe but them and I think you understand I mean do you want them I don't want I don't want to be on their trash list you know what I'm saying <laughs> anyways. I, I made it a little bit longer today because I had a lot of uh, stuff to say, but I also wanted to make sure that I represented the man, DJ Kuzmo, because that is my Lunchable dispenser. He helps me out every week. Y'all stay blessed. Deuces! Hey, yo. I have one more thing to say. And it, and it has to do with The Miz and everything Miz-related. Owen, Owen, I know you listening. Resident Hill, come get your boy. Please, come get your boy. That's all I have to say. Deuces. Love you, big guy. Even when DJ's not here, he's still here, right? Dang. I mean, that, that kind of had me for a, for a few seconds there, uh, Mr. Kanye Twitty. That, that, um, that was a pretty good impression at the beginning. I, I'm sure DJ is impressed. You know, DJ uh, is is probably sitting there going, wait a minute. I, I don't remember calling in and then realizes five seconds later, it is not him. <laughs> so uh, good stuff, good analysis. And that was for everybody that didn't listen to our review show that we did last night. That is essentially the the short and sweet of it. I mean, he pretty much hit on every point that we, we discussed. And uh, yes, I mean, the, the fire trash and lunchable list, good stuff. I mean, some, we, we got to, like, get a T-shirt for that. Like, get, a, like, a maybe a, a logo of fire and a garbage can with also Lunchables. There's got to be something that creative minds can put together to create a T-shirt for this. I mean, I'm, like, halfway kidding, but not really. So, yeah, I mean, look, look good stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to really comment on anything because I commented on all of that last night on our review show, the Rumble Wrap-Up slash uh, Raw Review. So I don't have a whole lot to add other than uh, I guess, Owen, you've been called out again. Yeah, so maybe that, that maybe that warrants an actual voice response next week. We'll see. And the plot thickens. 
So uh, anyway, guys, go check out the episode if you haven't. We had a great time last night on the Raw Review Show. So uh, thank you so much, Kanye. And we will be chatting soon, I'm sure. I'm, I'm seeing my Discord light up like a Christmas tree, by the way, as I'm writing that, or I'm uh, recording this. And I see people chatting about something. I don't know exactly what, know what the topic is. So I, I, I'm try, I try to get involved in Discord, but sometimes it's difficult to, to just kind of jump into a conversation. You don't know what's happening. So, all right. Anyway, guys, uh, let's get to our, uh, our, our voicemail. Here we go. I believe, wait a minute. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to jinx it. I no. this is, it's, uh, this is Sharon from Israel. So yes, let's get going. Hello, Matt. This is Sharon from Israel. So we are after the Royal Rumble, and I have a few things to say about this event. Gotta say, it was nice. Not my favorite Royal Rumble, but in a few moments I will talk about Rumble. First of all, I wanted to say that I was really excited about the shout out you gave me a few weeks ago. It wasn't a big thing, but you said my name that. Uh, I will be part of the mailbag show. And I got to say that I really feel a part of the WWE podcast, even though I'm not one of your uh, people that uh, do the podcast with you. The fact that I have a place to say my opinion about wrestling, it's good. Also, I've got to say that I am a fan of wrestling for a lot of time. Since I was a kid, I started to be a fan of wrestling at the at the Ruthless Aggression era. I got to say that I'm a big John Cena fan, a big Rey Mysterio fan, and not today's characters, those uh, wrestlers, but you know, their characters were re- a really big thing in the Ruthless Aggression era. One of my favorite Royal Rumble is the one that uh, Rey Mysterio won with all of the story of Eddie Guerrero. I was really excited about the fact that Mysterio won in that Rumble. And I got to say that wrestling for me always was something that I will, can run away to, some kind of uh, escapism. I'm really excited about that. That's it. Also, I got to say that a few weeks ago you said that you understood what the word sus means, that is, it is a suspect. I got to say that I had the same thing with my students. I'm a teacher for teenagers for cinema, and all of this time the students uh, said that I'm a sus, a sassy, <laughs> and they, they told me it is a suspect from the game Among Us, I don't know if you know it. So, yeah, I also felt like, what? I am old enough to don't understand what those uh, teenagers are talking about. So, yeah. Um, that's it in a general uh, thing. And now a few things about the World Rumble. First, I will start from the Women Rumble. I got to say, it was a weird, a weird Royal Rumble for the women. First of all, they got all of these... Uh, old superstars that many of them I didn't know who they are there was the, the, the teacher that talked about uh, polite uh, things that Rhea Ripley um, um, got her and there was the friend of uh, Naomi and there was Summer Rae. I mean I did knew them but I didn't know what they actually did and what the also weird thing that they done it's like bringing back the stories that nobody remember. The faction of uh, the Bella Twins and Alicia Fox. The feud between Summer Rae and Natalia. The friendship between Naomi and uh, Cameron, she called Cameron, I think. Nobody remember that. Who are they? What is this? I mean, the crowd in the arena... Most of them are fans from the last 10 years, and even though they are n- didn't understood what those toys that they're trying to put us, so why? And even those wrestlers are going to fade away a day after the Rumble. So what, so what do we need to care about that? It was so weird. And I thought about it. There was like 10 female superstars that was from the past. Why they didn't put 
the WWE and the NXT superstars. Think about it. There was, the, I said, the, this uh, wrestler that uh, talked about uh, polite things and be polite. She didn't was in the match for a long time. They could put Becky, um, no, no, they could put Bailey and Oscar also for 10 seconds. So what if they are not in shape? They didn't even put Alexa Blitz, Zaya Lee, <laughs> when, uh, how do you say, uh, I forgot uh, her name, the one with the green hair, I forgot, uh, Shotzi Blackheart. The, when she was got in the 30 number, I said, whew, I think they, I thought they forgot about her. Because they were so uh, eager to put the uh, wrestlers from the past and not put the real wrestlers, the ones that are in the WWE. So also it was weird. And I got to say, I didn't like the fact that Wanda Rousey win. She didn't was in the WWE for the last years. What she said about the WWE in the social media was also really bad. I didn't like it. And the fact that in the moment she got in, everybody, I mean, everybody knew she's going to win. It was so expected. I know that sometimes you say that expected can be good and it doesn't so bad. But I don't know. The fact that everybody knew that Ronda Rice is going to win, I didn't like it at all. So... I don't know, the women rumble gets some kind of a B, a B for me. The men rumble was also weird because there were no superstars from different years. There were no surprises. There were no people from NXT. There were no wrestlers and the Forbidden Dolphins. Nothing. They took 30 people of the roster, put it in the rumble. That's it. So this is like the the all different thing from the women Royal Rumble. If the women Royal Rumble put too many people from the past, here in this Rumble, in the men Rumble, they didn't put any people from the past. And it was also weird. And of course, it was also weird to see that Brock Lesnar is going to win because he got in. I mean, everybody knew it. No surprise. So expected. I mean, this is the Rumble, guys. It's supposed to be a celebration of... Uh, Surprise sentences and surprise people and surprise winnings. I gotta say, when it was Drew McIntyre that win, Edge that won, those people I didn't knew for sure that they were going to win. But what I got to say, um, after all, I think that they're going to give all of the titles to Lesnar. Maybe they will give also all of the titles to Ronda Rousey as well. It looked like they didn't uh, manage to uh, feel good about the current champions. It looked like Vince wants everybody, everything so new, so fresh, so like unexpected, but it is expected. And um, yeah, so that's it for me about the Rumble, about my wrestling uh, fan uh, history. And that's it. Hope you feel well. And see you next time. And uh, yeah, thank you. Well, Sharon, I'm glad to hear from you this week. And I'm glad that uh, you feel that you have a platform to, to talk wrestling where maybe you don't, uh, you know, in, in your in your day-to-day life, you don't have that, that friend or or an outlet to, to talk wrestling. I know I don't outside this. I mean, I'm, I'm the only one I know at least in my immediate friends and family that, that like wrestling. So yeah, we're, we're here for, for you, man. And I'm glad that you feel a part of the show because you are part of the show. Um, I look forward to hearing your voice every week. And, and of course that's, I'm not putting that responsibility on you. I'm not telling you, Oh man, you, you better call in every week or we're going to be mad. No, I mean, people got lives. This is not the number one priority for most people is to uh, make sure that they submit their mailbag questions or comments. I mean, I know that this is a, uh, you know, your free time activity. So I appreciate everybody taking the effort and time to do this because it's uh, I, I know that you could be doing a hundred other things with your life at that time. So I'm glad that we uh, we could give a little bit of um, support to your to your voice. And that's what this whole darn show is about is is the listeners. So um, 
thank you. And uh, Sharon, we look forward to you every week. So now on to, yeah, well, first of all, sus. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I'm with you. I feel really, really behind in the lingo that the kids are using today. I'm 36 years old. I, I feel I'm out of the loop now where I, before I had the, my finger on the pulse of everything that going, it's going on. Now I'm just, I fear, I hear everything like three years after the fact and feel like it's new. Then, then somebody tells me, dude, you know, that, that was something that was cool half a decade ago. And it's like, oh, you know, and then you feel like the old guy. Um, okay. Cameron and uh, her issue at the rumble, her, her debut or re-debut at the rumble and the announcers telling us the story of Cameron, at least a quick overview that she used to be part of the Funkadactyls with Naomi. And yeah, I know that you did mention like you didn't you didn't really know that about that and or you've forgotten and it wasn't really important. Well, think about how the in the the, the people in person felt. <laughs> I mean, because they don't have the announcers to lean on as a reminder of who the hell's Cameron again. You know, like maybe some people in the arena remembered her and her reaction wasn't completely silent. So there clearly were people that remembered who she was, but. There were a large, there's a large chunk of that audience that probably sat there going, huh? But for the audience at home, we did have the announcers, the commentators to lean on as to the context as to who she is and the connection with Naomi. So there was that, uh, but no NXT stars. Yeah, that was, I don't know what they're doing then doing with NXT. I really don't. Uh, it feels like they are truly keeping it its own separate entity. They didn't include them in survivor series. They're not including them in the rumble and they could have filled them in both. And I think it would have been better to do, but NXT is its own entity. At least that's the way Vince is viewing it for now. And having Braun, uh, Braun, Ronda Rousey and Bra- uh, Brock Lesnar win their Royal Rumbles. Think about how bad that has to be for morale. Now, I actually didn't have a problem with those picks. I, I really didn't have an issue. I-, I wasn't also freaking out like, oh my God, this is awesome. I just felt like averagely good about it. I was like, okay, safe pick. Um, I know a lot of people hated it, but think about how the men and women backstage feel where they bust their ass 365 days a year, um, you know, between training, eating, traveling, actually performing, uh, doing mic work, media appearances, everything that goes with it, being away from your friends and family. And then you're, you're working towards WrestleMania thinking that, Hey, maybe I could win the rumble this year. Maybe I'll be in contention for the championship this year. And then Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey come in who, are there, you know, on a, a very part-time basis. They just waltz in. Brock wins the championship. Ronda immediately wins the Royal Rumble. Brock wins the Rumble. And then there's your main events for the for WrestleMania. Now, again, I did mention that there are two spots for the championship because there's going to be, there's two top men's, women's, uh, men's championships and there's two top women's championships. So, of course, there's still one spot open for each gender. Uh, with the women's championship and the either WWE or Universal Championship, so of course you know there are there are two different paths. But imagine the morale backstage if you're if you are just there and you're you've been grinding even for years and these two just come in. You, I mean, it's got to be anger, jealousy, all that, you know. And, and uh, I'm sure there is. Now, um, as far as the Forbidden Door, yeah, we didn't get a Forbidden Door unless you consider Sarah Logan or Shane McMahon the Forbidden Door picks. Or Mickey James, the Forbidden Door picks. I mean, you talk about a womp womp moment. I mean, that it's kind of what it was. If if those were the the uh, the very uh, the very controversial Forbidden Door picks, I mean, I they they weren't very controversial. So um, anyway, thank you, uh, Sharon, for your contributions, and looking forward to hearing you next week. And let's move on to the next voicemail. Hey, it's Kyle from Baltimore. So I got done. Of course, watching the Rumble last night, and overall, look, I thought the opener was great with Rollins and Reigns. That was the, that was the best match of the entire show, um, but the two Rumble matches themselves, first of all, Sasha entered the, the Rumble match first, right? Okay, so I thought, and so, and when the, when it was, when it was the final few women in that match with Rhea, Charlotte, Shayna, and Ronda, you're telling me Sasha Bates could be a part of that? I thought that was beyond pathetic. I, I mean, look, Sasha was a pick to win anyway, and I, or, or if Ronda wasn't going to be there or, or whatever, it was like, it was Sasha to me all the way to, to, to win the Rumble. Now, I still think Sasha will, will, will face Charlotte at WrestleMania, which I hope. Uh, if, if Ronda doesn't pick Charlotte, hopefully she, I hope she doesn't, but who knows. 
Um, I think I just called before tomorrow's Raw, so, you know, but, um, but who knows? So, I just think, though, it's just like, man, if he knew that she wasn't go, that she, I just wish she never showed up on Friday, so that, look, this, look, this, 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 this would have been bad either way. Her getting eliminated the way she did by the leader of Bake Up All People. I just think it was very stupid and pathetic. And Brock Lesnar as well, just coming out and look, Brock Lesnar was gonna, was gonna face Roman Reigns, fine, whatever, I don't like it, but you know, they, this what they decided to do, so, there, there it is. Both Roman matches themselves, they suck. As matches. Um, but, the opener with Rollins and Reigns was great, and Becky, and Deidre was okay for what it was as a match, even though I knew Becky's going to retake the day sets. Um, but that's my thoughts about the Rumble match themselves. I thought they would, they just should have had Sasha in the Final Four, but no. And that just, that part just pissed me off the most. I think it's just, maybe because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big Sasha fan and, and I never like to see Sasha lose, but just that entire building didn't care at all what, when Sasha got eliminated. They were, it was, it, that, they didn't care. They were bored and I and upset, and it felt like a Daniel Bryan thing too. By the way, I guess that's all I have to say. Thanks for my call. Bye. Hey, it's Kyle. Uh, it's my second voicemail, and um, I just got I just started listening to your review show from um, the Rumble and talk about Sasha Banks and her outfits in general. And look, I agree that she is playing out her sexuality. She knows that she is an attractive woman, and look. I personally just don't – I never cared about how these women look. When I, when I started watching WWE, I never cared about the women. They bored me to tears because they just had five-second matches and not just worry about the whole sexuality. But, what, but when Sasha, Charlotte, and Becky debuted, they completely changed my my, my view of women's wrestling. I guess also Paige and, and AJ Lee I'll put, I'll put in there as well. Um, but so with Sasha in particular, though, the reason why I love Sasha is because she has great matches. I think personally she's good. She's good on the mic. I know you don't, but I think I, I, just, I just like what she has to say. Um, and you know, as she part of her sexuality, she is. But do I care about about it? No, but I guess that's just me. I know that she's a, a, a very attractive woman, but I just don't care about, about it. I don't. I just love the way she wrestles, and she's that she. Every time I look at her, I just I just see star. Uh, but that's my quick take on Sasha. You know, I always talk about her a lot because she's my favorite about her, what she does. But that's my two sets of that. Um, but that's it. Thanks for the call. Bye. Hey, Kyle. Thank you for calling in twice. It is, it is appreciated. Taking the time and, and sharing your thoughts here. So let's talk about your your first voicemail, and then I'll talk about the Sasha thing. So, well, really, the whole thing's about Sasha it, it, as a whole. I mean, when you're talking about the Women's Rumble and how it was an embarrassment that she was number one and they didn't make a big deal about her getting eliminated, and that's true. I, yeah, I was a bit surprised. And they didn't have Sasha in the Final Four. But, you know, again, when I go back to my theme about the whole there's two paths to a championship, yes, she didn't get this opportunity in the Rumble, but what if she ends up in the championship match anyway? Are you really going to care that, well, she didn't win the Rumble? No, you're going to care that she's in the main event of WrestleMania. One of the main events of WrestleMania, right? Like You're going to be just, that's what you want. That's the ultimate destination. And if that's the ultimate destination and that's all you care about, then how they ha- how they get there, does that really matter? You know, um, so I was a bit surprised too. I, I, Sasha, to me, was like a dark horse pick. My pick was Ronda Rousey to win the uh, Women's Royal Rumble. But yeah, I mean, having her not in the Final Four is a bit of a head scratcher. I don't know why. I don't, I don't understand, uh, you know, uh, but again, what about Bailey? What about Oscar? They're very close to returning. Where do they fit in? There's a lot of unknowns. This women's division is by far, if there's only one-on-one matches for the women's championships on both brands, I will be floored. More likely that there's triple threats or fatal four ways, fatal five ways, fatal six ways. Hell, there probably is going to be a battle royal for both women's championships at WrestleMania. I'm joking, but maybe not really. Sasha Banks' outfits. Okay. I, I explained this maybe more than I thought I needed to and maybe more than I wanted to spend time on. But look, if you don't see her and go, wow, um, her body and her sexuality is distracting, more power to you. Maybe it's just myself. But I, I have a, s- a suspicion that, you know, um, there's a chunk of the male audience and maybe female audience, depending on your preference of, uh, of uh, partners, that look at that and go, hey, 
Um, she's good on the mic, but uh, her her body is so damn distracting. Her her outfits are so distracting. I think it you know there is a chunk of the audience that that does feel that that way, and my I'm in that chunk of the audience. So if you don't see that, that's awesome. That's good. Uh, maybe it means you're not as sick of a person as I am. So that's good. <laughs> um, and uh, so more power to you. But I do think there's an audience like myself that exists that looks at her and says, man, she is really good in the ring. She's a living um, a legend in the making for the women's division. And she's I think, you know what, when you said I don't like I think Sasha sucks on the mic. I think she's OK to to good. She's been good at times. She's been bad at times. She's been okay at times, but she very rarely touches the exceptional category and rarely, and rarely does she touch the God awful category. She kind of lives somewhere in the middle for me. So uh, as far as the mic work goes, but in ring, I agree. She's amazing. She's really, really good in the ring. There's no, no, that's undeniable. So, um, all right. Well, I hope I explained myself a little bit more, but uh, Kyle, thank you for calling in and let's keep things rolling. Hey, uh, I was just, uh, wondering why here, by the way, I was just wondering if, uh, um, I, I have a theory for how to book, uh, past WrestleMania, but to WrestleMania is like, so you have, uh, Becky's opponent, the, uh, I think Dewdrop would work better, but, uh, yeah, Dewdrop would be better than Bianca. Because Bianca's over right now as a face, so even though Bianca makes more sense, I'm thinking, like, this is the problem with this idea. It's that, why, why WWE? Why did you turn Becky Lynch heel? Why? You, you have so many opportunities. This, this could have been so much better, so much easier, but you could try to turn her back face, because there's still a lot of people that are cheering her, and so, Anyway, you could have Dewdrop, uh, uh, team up with, I don't know, uh, or maybe like Shayna Baszler and Talia. You could have them team up. And you could have them attack Becky and like you have like a three on one attack on her at WrestleMania to get the crowd back behind Becky. I don't know. And then maybe if you have Dewdrop become the champion and then uh, like at Backlash. So, oh, and also, all this is going on. Roman Reigns is facing Brock Lesnar, and Seth Rollins has a storyline injury. And all well, this is all happening. Uh, so at Backlash, Becky Lynch faces off against Dewdrop, trying to get her championship back, and she's about to win and overcome all three of Shayna Baszler, Dewdrop, and Natalia, and then Roman Reigns comes out and attacks her and knocks her out and spears her and gives her a Superman punch, and then Seth comes running down, and Seth returns running down the ramp, and and the Usos ambush Seth, and that leads to a, a storyline with uh, Seth and Becky sort of like pitted against Roman Reigns. I think it's an interesting idea. Bye. Hey, uh, I think you said Wyatt at the very beginning, very quickly. I think you said Wyatt. So um, if, if it is, well, welcome, brother. So, okay, L- let me uh, just say this right off the top. You're right. Becky Lynch turning heel was ill-advised, to say the very least. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. This isn't Monday morning quarterbacking. It doesn't feel right. It feels very Austin-esque. If you remember back in 2001, when Austin turned heel twice, he tried it at WrestleMania 17, then tried it again at Invasion. When he turned on Team WWF, hitting Kurt Angle with a stunner to have uh, the Alliance win that match, ultimately leading uh, the Alliance in, in uh, battle against WWF, I mean, it, it didn't work. If fans don't want to cheer or boo Becky Lynch, just like they didn't want to boo Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, is she at the level of Stone Cold? No. But it's the only analogy I can think of where they just the fans want no part in this. The fans just they they play along at times, but every time that they hear her music, it's like the slate gets wiped clean and they go, oh, oh, it's Becky. I love this music. So maybe getting rid of the music would help. Changing it up would help. Sami Zayn has done that, getting rid of his sing along music. 
Uh, Bailey did it eventually, changing her music. You know, that does help. Music is a big part of the entrance. It's a big chunk of it. And if you get rid of that music, I think it would help if they're truly committed to turning her heel. But is she really heel? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't I don't feel it. It's a very I don't like to struggle. Right. Like if I was in attendance, I wouldn't want to feel like I have to struggle to, to boo her because my innate instinct is to cheer her. Right. It's it's very ill advised. And I would have in, in your whole plan to turn her back baby face. They don't even have to do that. They literally have to almost do nothing to have her just continue as baby face. Just if she wants to still be big time Bex, she can still be big time Bex. Even if she wants to wear those ridiculous outfits, maybe just not. All she has to do is this is just don't turn. Don't back down from a uh, a fight and don't run down the city you're in. That's it. Two very easy things to not do. And she's back into a baby face lane. There's no convoluted story she needs to get into. No Roman Reigns story. I like your story. But to me, that's that's overkill. She's so close to a baby face anyway. She's barely a heel. She's heel by definition, but she's not heel in reality. So there's really not a big thing they need to do to have her uh, turn back to a baby face. I got to say, I mean, she, she essentially is there already without it actually being a title that she has. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I like your story or I, I like your uh, projection out to WrestleMania. I just also don't think they're going to have male on female violence. I'm advocating for it because I think stories warrant it, especially when women can just beat on men and men just have to stand there and take it because, you know, rules or or society, I guess we have to just stand there and take it like good little soldiers. It's a bunch of crap. Like, I mean, I, I got to say in the world of pro wrestling, come on, you know, especially if it's going to further the story and you can do it in a safe way. There are times to have retaliation on men. I'm not saying they should go around, you know, hitting women over the head with steel chairs, but it also makes the men look weak that they just because they're they're really stronghold by the TV rating and uh, society's perception of WWE that they have to stand there and uh, just just take it because, uh, well, we're men. We can't retaliate. We apparently we're not um, we're not entitled to self-defense when it comes to women attacking us in pro wrestling. You know, so I don't know. I, I have my big issues with that. But so that's why I don't think that that is going to be a. um that that's going to be a, a thing is because of that. But I, I like it, man. I like it. Okay, let's keep things moving, folks. Hey, Matt, it's Kyle from New York again. Um, first thing I want to say is uh, I actually I actually sent an email last week for the takeover mailbag, and uh, Mr. Casarelli I never got it. I don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah, I sent an email last week about like Roy Rumble predictions and stuff to him. So I don't know what happened to it. I sent it. I even double checked after I listened to the Millbeck episode. It did, it did send, so I don't know. Who should me? It did send. Anyway, uh, so the Royal Rumble. Overall, I think it was a pretty good show. I didn't like two things. I didn't like the men's Rumble that much. At least who won it? I didn't want Brock Lesnar to win it. I want AJ Styles to win it. I mean, the women to want the Morgan to win it. I guess the winners are fine. I mean, I feel the same way about you with Ronda Rousey. I do not like Ronda Rousey as a person, as a character, as a human being. Not trying to, trying, trying to, uh, you know, to get to, and it's probably a sensitive topic for people. Some people are probably big fans of her. I'm sorry. I just don't like her as a human being or a person or a character. I just do not like Ronda Rousey, period, at all. I hope she gets released, honestly. That's why I don't like her. I shouldn't say that. That's, that's bad to say. But I hope, I hope she quits on her own terms. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, I wish we are getting her versus Becky. I don't want her versus Charlotte, but that's, that seems like that's where we're going. And I don't want to see Roman and Brock one-on-one again. Put some Raw to Drew McIntyre in there, so I make a triple threat. I don't like this at all. Uh, why couldn't Sasha win the Royal Rumble? <laughs> I know it's me being biased, but I want to see Sasha versus Charlotte at WrestleMania. That's not happening. So that sucks. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't really think of any questions. I just want to give my thoughts and opinions on the Rumble, I guess. I guess the one thing I will ask is, do you think Seth and Roman are going to have a rematch at the Elimination Chamber? I guess that's all I got to ask. And my three minutes are almost up already. So, thanks as always, and I'll talk to you next week. Kyle, 
Well, my apologies. I have no idea what happened. I did get the email, and I sent it on to Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. He had a ton to go through, so it's possible that he um, overlooked it. Or for whatever reason, it bounced back to me, but I don't see it in my my mailbox. So I'm just going to you know, uh, pass the buck to Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan and point all of the blame, like 100% of the blame on Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. And, uh, I mean, there's only one thing I can say after that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's that's it, right? I mean, <laughs> that's the only thing I can say left. That, that's it. I mean, so I, you, you've heard it right here. I, I guess Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan has been publicly fired. And, uh, of course, I'm 100% joking. But I really, Kyle, I, I honest, honest to God, I, um, I don't know why the email wasn't read. Um, you know, we, we will make it up to you. If you want to send in your email next week, we'll put it towards the top of the show and not let you wait. We'll put you in with the, the patrons. Okay. How about that? We'll, we'll put you in with the patrons. And next time that Casual Wrestling Fan and Mrs. Casual Wrestling Fan do their, um, do their uh, review and their, their comments and responses to the mailbag, which will be in just a couple of weeks <laughs> already with the Elimination Chamber coming up in February 19th. So that's, that's my promise to you. Okay. As far as Ronda getting released, <laughs> I don't think you're taking it too far because it's not like her getting released by WWE is going to put her in any financial hardship. You know, there's a difference between somebody that's a mega star that was a mega star and made a boatload of money prior to coming to WWE with UFC movie deals, sponsorships, commercials, all that. And then, having her get released from her contract is not going to exactly break the bank for Ronda. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It's probably a multi-million million dollar contract. But I won't feel bad for her. Like, we're not going to start a GoFundMe for, uh, for, for her anytime soon. Okay? N- none of us are going to do a collection for her, her Christmas gift. Uh, so I, I, I will not feel bad if she got released. I, 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 yeah, I do like her as a performer. I will say that because I want to see somebody beat, her, beat the holy hell out of her. To me, she's a great villain in that sense. Uh, Seth and Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber. Yeah, I could see that. Because I don't think they want Seth and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So they're going to get through it at EC, Elimination Chamber, and then move on to maybe Drew and Roman slash Brock in there as well because he's obviously challenging Roman. So, that's what I'm, yeah, that's a good call. And, and I think they'll probably get through it at that point. And Seth and Roman will put on another clinic at Elimination Chamber. So, all right. Keep things going and uh, see who's next. Oh, hey, Matt, it's Devin here. I'm from Brazil, Australia. Hope you will. Um, watch the Royal Rumble as um, there are millions of people in the uh, WWE University. Uh, it's got me excited again seeing Ronda Rousey back, though I have probably have seen a similar angry look on her face from um, my toddler when he doesn't get his own way at home. So... Uh, Kind of off-putting, watching her pat like she does. It's just, I don't like it. But anyway, um, I'm looking forward to where the storyline heads. Um, one other observation I've always made with the Royal Rumbles is especially when you've obviously got some match, um, some, the, 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 the Rumbles going on, right? And then the music is for someone who is making a return, in this case, Ronda Rousey. Everyone in the ring just stops what they're doing. It's like, drop the tools. Let's just look and put our disbelief face on. Now, as a heel who's possibly in the ring at the time, this would be the best time to go, oh, hey, everyone's just stopped. And he could throw, he or she, this could happen in um, any match, he or she could just start throwing people over the top rope because no one's paying attention. No one's back doing battle. They're all just staring like possums in headlights. So I always find that amusing. I mean, I know you don't want one person suddenly clear the ring, uh, but, my God, the opportunity's there for someone to go, hey, I'm taking advantage of this, especially a heel, and just start hoiking people over the top rope. So... Uh, yeah, that's just my observation. Um, I think that would be, uh, you know, that could create other storylines, as a heel taking out another heel or a baby face down the line by him doing that or her. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of find it a bit weird that everyone just stops and stares. Uh, anyway, um, I'm looking forward to the WrestleMania season. 
And um, the fact that there's fewer pay-per-views between now and WrestleMania will hopefully build the hype up more for each match without them having to make a further detour and thinking of another potentially off-putting storyline just to get them to the line. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it all goes and um, speak to you soon. Bye. Bevan, hope all is well over there in Australia and things are improving. COVID seems to be better here. I don't know. I'm not sure what the stats are over there, but um, my best wishes to you and your family. So, you know, I, that, that is a, that's a fun point that you bring up about how when certain people come out and the music hits and everyone stands and stops, it'd be a great time for somebody to throw the other people over the top rope, wouldn't it? Great time. And if that's the objective and they're, they're really their life's goal is on the line, and we're supposed to, we were told time after time after time that you're here because you want to main event WrestleMania and this is the biggest opportunity of your entire life and maybe your last opportunity. And you're standing there like a buffoon watching somebody walk to the ring because music is going off. Yeah. I mean, like, look, that is, it's one of the, one of the biggest pet peeves list. It's on the list of biggest pet peeves about the Rumble. Like, I love the Rumble as much as anybody else does because it's just, it's so unpredictable. It's, it's a great format. It's so much. That's great about it, but those are one, that's one thing. People being able to eliminate other people that are already eliminated makes no sense. Uh, having people be able to sit outside the ring as long as they want before they enter the match makes no sense. You should have X amount of time to get in the ring or you're eliminated, period, um, like Sonya Deville did and countless others before her in years prior. Now, the other thing is, too, the other big thing I have, while we're on pet peeves and you've started this, uh, I'm, I'm holding you personally responsible, Bevan, for me ranting right now is when you have people who are in the rumble, men and women, who have uh, just somehow formulated the worst strategic plan of all time to win the rumble by attacking people who are about to throw another opponent out of the ring, i.e. Tamina. Tamina was is example number one, is exhibit A with this particular strategy because she was the spoiler for having people be eliminated in the matchup. Why would you stop anyone from eliminating anyone? It is to your advantage to let it happen. But for the in, in the interest of making sure that there's enough women in the ring to elongate the match, I guess that they do this. I it makes no sense and it makes everyone look stupid. Like when you, it never made sense to me. Even when I was watching this at 15 years old, I'm like, "What? Why why are they why are they stopping this elimination? Do they not realize this will help them as well?" Because there's fewer people to deal with. So, I mean, when you when you rank those things, Bevan, yeah, th- th- that certainly makes my top five as well. But um, just, I don't know. Bevan, you're going to get me rolling. I need to stop. Maybe that was your point. And you, trigger has been initiated, I guess. So thank you so much, buddy. And uh, we will hopefully talk to you next week. All right. Let's keep going. A couple more. Hey, Matt. It's Brad in New York. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about the Royal Rumble and all the things that we saw. And I'm just a little annoyed. I mean, I love the WWE. I'm not one of these people that wants to sit here and bash it um, at all. But, you know, like, Sasha Banks does this whole thing on Friday night um, where she comes back. It's a huge surprise. Everyone's really excited she's going to be in the Royal Rumble. She comes out first. And, I mean, you have to think that she's going to win it or have a really good showing. And then she just gets knocked out, like, eight and nine minutes in, it was so disappointing. And and you have all these women that, you know, I don't know who a lot of these women are. Um, the, the Molly Hollies and the, the, the Kelly Kellys and all these really insignificant people that obviously are going to mean absolutely nothing to the match. And they're like somehow getting, uh, higher billing than someone like Sasha. It just really bothered me. I I don't know. I just thought Sasha should have really won the thing. Um, And you did not have to have Ronda Rousey win it. She could have come in, honestly, at number one or number two. She could have put an incredible showing, lasted until, like, the final three or final two. She would have come out looking amazing. She did not need to win it. I feel like that win should have gone to someone like a Sasha, like a Bianca, like a Liv Morgan, like someone that's just earned it just by being there every single day. Um, I thought the Seth Roman match was really great. I have no problem with that. Um, I think Seth really deserves a championship, though. 
Um, he's just been putting in double work, overtime, SmackDown, Raw, everything, doing everything they ask of him, killing it, being an incredible wrestler, incredible um, teammate to, to everyone there, to the whole company. I feel like he really deserved the win. Um, and in the Men's Royal Rumble, I'm probably just going to get cut off, so I'm going to call you right back, actually. Bye. Yeah, so it's Brad in New York. So like I was saying, in the Men's Royal Rumble, we have, I think, two of the final five guys were Bad Bunny and uh, Shane McMahon. We needed that with all these guys doing all this work all year long, on the road, every show. The people, the two of the five people at the end are Bad Bunny and uh, and Shane Stupid McMahon, who's throwing these stupid uppercuts left and right and doing that one thing interesting wrestling-wise. I think he was the, the third to last person in the whole match, um, which is an absolute joke. I want nothing to do with this guy. Um, what an annoying entrant and, and just seemed to just want to make it all about him. Like he was such an important part of the Rumble and such an important part of what WWE is currently doing. I get it, he's the owner's son, but whatever. I mean, that was just annoying to me and so stupid. Um, but I loved the event. I thought it was a lot of fun to watch in general. I actually thought the, the Lashley um, Brock match was really cool with Paul Heyman just being such a predictable snake and just having zero loyalty to anything or anyone kind of funny and just I, I kind of felt bad for Brock so I wasn't like angry that Brock won the Rumble because he did get so screwed um, and I think it was kind of like almost a feel good story him winning it but um, that wasn't what bothered me it was just that you know with all these guys Big E gets eliminated there's not even a mention of it so um, you know Rick Boogs is be- bench pressing guys about to throw him out of the ring and the camera cuts somewhere else to show nothing didn't even catch that on camera um, Rick Boog's, um awesome elimination that he did. I don't know. I just feel like it's an opportunity to elevate people. And the other thing I want to say is about the NXT people. Um, you couldn't have had a Braun Breaker in this match. You couldn't have had um, a Raquel Gonzalez or a Cora Jade or any of these awesome NXT people. They would have been Mandy Rose. Um, and by the way, where the hell was Zia Lee? She doesn't make the, the Royal Rumble. She, she's, we need Kelly Kelly more than her. I mean, it is so stupid. But um, I, I really did enjoy it, honestly, all in all. But, yeah, that's uh, just a little rant, I guess. Thanks, man. Hopefully uh, we have a good um, next few weeks with, with wrestling, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, Brad. Great points. So let me go through a few of them. I can't go through every little one. But I, I will touch on the ones that I haven't already. Well, at least add to them. So Sasha Banks, you are not the first person, if you listen to this far in the episode, uh, that has talked about Sasha Banks being essentially an afterthought. It was very strange the way she was treated. Very, very strange. Um, very, very odd in which she was just kind of disregarded almost as a, as, as um, kind of a mid-card to lower-card talent. It was just very odd. Now... Things may change drastically on SmackDown. She may just get right in Charlotte's face, and boom, we have a championship match. Maybe she gets in Ronda's face. I mean, there's so many so many possibilities. I don't think Sasha Banks will be a forgotten piece of the women's division at WrestleMania. I'll just say that. Um, but Seth versus Roman, yes, um, definitely was the match of the night. And him having a championship is long overdue. Seth Rollins needs a championship at this point. He deserves a championship at this point. He has been so good now for so long, it's time. His character's ready. It's in a good place. He needs it. He would be able to lead, the, uh, steer the ship. Now, it shouldn't be Roman Reigns that he takes it from. It should probably be winning it at the Elimination Chamber. That's what I hope. That's my prediction. I don't think Bobby holds this championship very long. Um, so the, the next point, yeah, I mean, having two of the final five be Bad Bunny and Shane McMahon... <laughs> WWE sometimes prioritizes quote unquote star power over their actual day-to-day performers. 
they they just for whatever reason feel that that's a bigger way to end the rumble. At least that's the way Shane McMahon booked this thing, and uh, it's sometimes very ill advised to do so. And it is disrespectful to the guys that are there. Just as it is that women the women there are probably pissed off that Ronda Rousey's gonna just walk in and win the rumble, and they've been there every day busting their ass for years. I mean, it's kind of the nature of the business. It, you know, it, it is the nature of the business. And uh, but looking at this, yeah, Shane McMahon with his uppercuts and all the things he does. He's been criticized for that for, I mean, as long as I can remember. Shane's punches have never been good, ever. I mean, even when he was 20 years younger. Uh, as far as Zia Lee not in the Rumble, uh, well, I, 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 if I was to guess, I would imagine that she's probably in the nether realm defending Earth um, and making sure that uh, that Liu Kang doesn't invade Earth uh, because she right now, I believe, is partnered up with Raiden and they're on a mission to make sure that... Uh, that um, the, uh, the the Mortal Kombat tournament goes smoothly and nobody breaks the rules and we don't have the outer world I- invading um, I- invading Earth. So, I mean, she's the protector of the realm. So I'm, I'm fairly sure I, I saw that on several websites. It was all over uh, all over the big news sites. So, um, you know, that, that's that's the last I heard. So if she's out there protecting Earth, the Earth realm, then, um, you know, that's definitely more important, I'd say, than winning the Rumble. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. So, all right, Brad, thank you. And I believe this is our final voicemail. And it looks like based on what I'm reading here from the translation from voice to text, it is Memphis Mark. So let's see if it is. Hey, you guys, this is Memphis Mark calling you from Mullet Manor here in beautiful Tennessee. And uh, I was going through uh, this past Raw. I did not get to see the past pay-per-view, but according to what I've read from some great uh, uh, correspondents and people, uh, I didn't miss a whole, whole lot. But what I did see, what I did see was writers that couldn't figure out a way to, to, to pass more than a few weeks. There was no way. I mean, what they did was set up that Bobby and Brock and Roman, everybody's still kind of on the same page. They're they're having to keep their big heavy hitters up there so they can do this. Uh, it's it's usually a classic writer's block. They don't know what to do, so there's a few weeks in territorial days that uh, that you wouldn't have a clear purpose or a clear path. They've had it for a few more than a few weeks. Um, free Cesaro, what the hell's going on, man? They're never going to do anything with Cesaro. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, they're they're ruining uh, Priest, and then now the Cesaro, they've just thrown the dumpers. Uh, they're putting them up there with the Miz, and that really is disappointing. Hey, other than that, everybody. Spay and neuter their pets. Have a great day. Matt, get some sleep. Mrs. Matt, hit him for me. Thanks. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Did I just, did, did we just get an, a uh, provocation for domestic violence on this show? I, I, I'm fairly sure. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I can report this to the authorities. Or I can just do what uh, pro wrestling would do. And uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to settle this in the ring. Right. As Kurt Angle would say, we settle this in the ring. So uh, <laughs> what I mean by that, maybe my wife and I, any issues, marital issues, we'll just settle them in the ring. But to WWE rules, I'll just have to sit there and let my wife beat the holy hell out of me because I can't retaliate. Um, because apparently, you know, it's, it's just not allowed as I went through a number of uh, minutes ago. So, Mark, um, first of all, good to hear from you. Yes. Spay new to your pets. Definitely. And um, so as far as. The, the writing goes, yeah, I mean, they can't sometimes see the forest through the trees. They just book very short term. They have an idea maybe what they want to do long term, but it's not showing itself on a week to week basis. So they kind of just do stuff. And that's been the problem for I don't know how long WWE just does stuff and they don't have a long term plan for what they want to do. Do I need to go back and mention retribution? Do I need to go back and mention raw underground? Do I do I need to? Do I need to mention why we never got an explanation for Brock Lesnar's suspension being lifted? They just did it and didn't bother to explain why there's people showing up on SmackDown that are Raw stars and vice versa. Do I need to? They just do stuff. 
So this should not be a surprise. And, and it's a sad expectation. They, they've set now the expectation in educated fans that just stuff like this happens and, you know, you guys don't care enough. You just want the ultimate destination. You don't really care about how we get there. We're just going to get there. And I care. You care. And I think most fans do. And I think it's insulting to the intelligence of fans when they just they just do stuff with short-term booking. As you said, there's weeks in which, yeah, you're going to have a kind of a schmoz show or two, but not on a regular basis. You know, the, not on a regular basis for sure. Um, yeah, and as far as Damian Priest and Cesaro, yeah, I, I have I have more faith in what they're going to do with Damian Priest than to do Cesaro because I think Damian Priest is still what a shiny new toy, so to speak, where they don't know fully what they have. Cesaro's been there for how many years now? They know exactly what they have in Cesaro. They... I think have felt that they've gotten everything they can get out of Cesaro, but he's a good gatekeeper. He can work with anybody. He's an amazing athlete. He's insanely strong. He doesn't do anything stupid to hurt the company in a PR way. So that they, they know what they've gotten in Cesaro and therefore they, they're going to keep him around because he's a, a good, a good quote unquote hand to have. And so, uh, but as far as if anybody's a Cesaro fan that believes he's eventually going to make it to the very top, he's going to have an amazing run and he's going to be the face of the company. Those days are long gone. Unfortunately, uh, I hate to say it for those that are Cesaro fans. I think him facing Roman Reigns last year for the Universal Championship was the, when we look back, will be the crux of his career, sadly. So, all right, well, that will conclude the show here for the mailbag. Uh, we made it under two hours. My God, it's a miracle. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for contributing this week from Kyle from New York, Kyle from Baltimore. Uh, we, we've, of course, got Sharon from Israel. We've got Memphis Mark. We've got, I mean, uh, Kanye Twitty. I mean, I'm not trying to miss any, anybody, but... Uh, we, we do have some great uh, Brad from New York. Um, everybody, thank you so much for your contributions. This show is for you and it's about you. It's not about me as much as I try to make it about me. I, I try my damnedest to really make sure it centers around me and my thoughts and, you know, because my uh, my ego is a big problem. Um, but uh, I, this show really is for you guys. So thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for contributing. If you want to go and contribute in a way that's free, you don't have to spend a dime easy. You just head on over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star rating and review. It really, really helps us out more than you guys know. Um, it, it really does. And I'll continue to try to do more video on TikTok. We're about at 2,000 followers now. Um, so follow us at the WWE Podcast there. I'll, I'm trying to make videos from time to time. Uh, I want to get into more videos as a whole, by the way. Eventually, I may do, my long-term thoughts are maybe in some time in 2022, I want to do exclusive video content, just like a few minutes. Not long form, a few minutes where it's on my website because I have a great domain of WWPodcast.com that I just post my stuff to, but it's not really a place most people go to. So I want to make that more of a destination and maybe set up some exclusive content, um, that kind of stuff. So just I'm um, forward thinking, but um, thank you, everybody, uh, for listening. I'll be back on Sunday night for your weekend review. Until then, thanks so much for listening. As always, take care, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.